Hello and welcome to Click Data and the course in Microsoft Outlook 2007. The program Outlook is a part of the Office Suite and, if this isn't enough, the program is the core around which the other programs revolve. This was something Microsoft had already acknowledged in Office 2003 and is promoting even more in this version. Apart from Outlook Express and the new Windows Mail in Windows Vista, Outlook 2007 is about so much more than just handling your email. Think of it more as your information headquarter. This is where you keep track of your contacts and meetings, get reminded of things to do, deadlines and so on. How you work in Outlook greatly depends on what size company you're in. In larger companies, you have your personal profile with inbox, calendar and contacts that you share between yourself and your colleagues. You have access to your co-workers' calendars, which can be useful when scheduling, scheduling a mutual meeting, taking care of others' emails during vacations and appointing tasks for colleagues. For all this, you need an exchange server. In the smaller sized company, you have your own calendar, your own contacts and no one else has access to your meetings, clients or information. You don't need an exchange server, but will then not be able to use all the functions in Outlook. Anyway, Outlook is of as much use in both of these worlds. This course is for those of you wanting to get to know the program. Maybe you've used other email programs earlier. Maybe you just want to know more about the Outlook you already have. In the next two hours, you'll learn the following. In the first chapter, you'll get an introduction to what the program is all about, since Outlook does so much more than just email. You'll get acquainted with the different parts of the interface and program, check out what Outlook today can help you with, and create the accounts you need. You don't have to add a client in contacts just to be able to send her emails, but it will be so much easier for you and there will be other positive effects by having her in your contact folder. This is why we concentra concentrate on your contacts in the second chapter, how you import them, use them, search for and categorize them in different ways. We'll also look into the different color categories. In the third chapter, it's time for the email. I'll show you the advantages with email and how to create new formatted messages. One important factor is to find important messages, so we'll look deeper into sorting, searching for and following up messages. In the calendar, you book your appointments, but also events and private assignments. This is why you in the fourth chapter will learn how to create a new calendar that you can send to anyone with a regular email address. After a while, this will lead to an inbox, calendar and contacts for many people, so it will be essential to know how to clear and archive on a regular basis. Outlook is, as I said earlier, the core of the Office program. Therefore, we'll take the email to yet another level in the fifth chapter. We'll create rules and new folders, attach external documents to messages, and try to get rid of as much junk mail as possible. RSS fields will give you news and stock options information, straight to Outlook, and when you need to know what the opinions of other people are, you can ask them to cast a vote for different alternatives. If you have an exchange server, meaning sharing data at work, you'll have access to all the functions in Outlook. You'll be able to invite your colleagues and business associates to meetings automatically booked in the calendar, delegate tasks to others at the office, share calendars and appoint delegates when you're out of the office. So, let's get started. Welcome. And since I'm in Windows Vista, 
I can either write Outlook in this box here, or I can go here and look for this yellow icon, which symbolizes Email Microsoft Outlook. Let's start the program from here. Just write Out, and it will show up here, and now it's ready to start. Depending on whether you've had the program open and running, looked around, clicked on different things, then it won't look exactly like mine does here. We'll start by looking at the different parts, so you become familiar with the program. If this is the first time you start Outlook, after installation, it will probably ask you about your email settings. If so, go directly to the chapter where I'll go through that part. But for now, press Cancel and Outlook will start looking like this. Let us go to the frame. Here you have your mail, calendar and different contacts. And depending on where you click, you'll receive information instantly. This is our Outlook today, where we can choose links, for example, our inbox. This is exactly the same thing as clicking out here on Inbox. In just a short while, we'll look at how to get back to home. I click on my calendar, and as soon as I click somewhere in here, everything in the large space changes, as well as in what is above, as you can see. In Contacts, you can structure and search by clicking on different letters or go back to the calendar and click up here to look at, for example, a certain day, week or month. There are, of course, several other things to work with in Outlook. And to see these, we drag and drop at the dots in the frame here. Now there's more space and the small buttons down here move up and increase in size. Even if you don't drag and drop the frame, you can choose the buttons down here. Tasks are the things you need to remember. For example, a to-do list, which is related to time or date. Here we see next seven days, which is connected with date or time. We move on to notes, which are things you need to remember to do, and this is also related to the date when it was created. When clicking on New, we see that this function looks like a post-it. You type here, close, and place the notes here. If I instead go to Tasks and choose New, I need to choose a start date and a due date. I can also add a reminder when I want to be reminded of the task. If I don't want this, I just press Delete and then it closes. I might want all these functions in a list instead of clicking around, so I click on this button, Folder List. Now everything is placed in my personal folders, like my calendar or context, or directly to my inbox. Everything is now in this simple list here for me to go to directly to the things I want. Down here I also have shortcuts, and with this I can create, as I've done with Mail, a shortcut to my inbox. I just click on Shortcuts, then add New Shortcut. I want to come directly to my inbox, so I click on this and then press OK. Now it's here under Shortcuts. I don't find this particularly logical since I can go to Folders, so I go here, make a right click and delete Shortcut. Then yes. And now it's deleted. If I don't want this Shortcuts button showing at all, I click on Configure Buttons and Add or Remove Buttons. Here I choose Shortcuts and now it's gone. In Configure Buttons, I can also choose Show More Buttons. Then the buttons will move up or show fewer buttons then they move down. 
I do the same thing when I click and hold down the mouse button, then drag and drop like this. Now you make sure you have your mail, calendar and contacts in the list and we'll go back to mail.